because we like to look at it that way and um, we like to uh, experience the opportunity of everybody getting together at the symposium which is going to be in California this year and I understand that you're going to bring a whole boatload of people um, to the symposium so that should be really interesting for those of you who haven't participated in it before um, it really does um, warm your heart <laughs> me personally when I see my communities that I've visited win so that really is one of the things that makes this effort for me personally worthwhile um, I also really enjoy the fact that uh, there are so many uh, people who really love their community and that the spirit that you all in, embody is really very unusual where I live I when I go back I'm always really embarrassed because I just do not get that same sense of community from people. So I think you probably don't all maybe realize how unique it is because you're it right in the middle of it. And for you, sometimes it's kind of commonplace, but I have to tell you that it's not. It's unusual, it's rare, and it's really lovely. So um, I, like, I want to thank you all again. And I want to also, um, my the lead judge from last year had a theme and so I wanted to think about a theme. And my theme is the three Ps. And it kind of is uh, indicative of America in bloom. The, the three Ps that I wanted to mention to you all is um, places, people, and programs. Um, and that's what America in bloom is about. So these are, the, the first thing is the concept of place. And American Bloom has become very involved um, uh, with this national program that you may all not know about, which is the National Pollinator Network. And the objective is to have a million gardens identified on the web, both, both public and private, that are uh, directed towards encouraging pollinators. So I have, if you don't ha all have a pollinator garden somewhere, I have a packet of seeds that was provided as part of this through USDA for you all to start um, a pollinator garden or to add to one that you already have. Cool. And the, the next, uh, the, the people part of it is I wanted to let you all know that there is an organ, uh, a joint activity between Longwood Gardens and um, the American Horticultural Society because they have discovered through statistical research that there is a serious gap among young people who are involved in horticulture and pursuing it as a career versus the number of positions that are out there. Mm -hmm. Like a third of the positions in horticulture across the United States go unfilled because there are not enough young people who are wanting to take on this career. And for all of us who are interested in gardens and interested in beautifying our community with plants, if there's not young people coming, then that's not gonna go anywhere. So that organization is just starting up and it's called Seeds for the Future. So if you keep your eyes open and do things to encourage more young people to become involved in the activities that you are all deeply involved in, that is really important. The third thing that I wanted to mention to you is about programs, which you might not be aware of. And that is, um, this is a program between the U.S. Botanic Garden and uh, uh, Lady Johnson Wild, uh, Wildflower, I forget the exact name of it, in Texas. And uh, you probably all know about the LEADS initiative, which is to make buildings internally more envi environmentally friendly. Well, there's also something called the SITES initiative, which is the idea of making the outside of a building compliant in terms of the plantings that are there. President Obama just signed on to require federal buildings to be compliant with the sites initiative. So it's the same kind of thing. It's like leads, you have a certification process. Out of sites, there is an effort that is called Landscapes for Life. And rather than making it mandatory, what Landscapes for Life does is 
set forth principles for home gardeners to be able to incorporate some of these same principles that are part of the sites initiative. So I don't know who the right person might be to give it to, um, but what I do have is the instructor's manual and the student's manual that it has been put together by Landscapes for Life. And I do have some so they're probably in the, I didn't pull them out, but a little yeah. booklet that talks about the principles of landscapes for designate life. designate Jill. Yeah, we yeah. will yeah. share yeah. it and then we yeah. the city yeah. has an office. I can get you more, but I brought these along just to give you an idea of some of the other organizations that are out there that you might not be aware of that you can potentially tap into for assistance mm -hmm. in improving, not that what you're doing isn't great, but there's always room for, to do a little more and to engage with other people and other organizations that are trying to do the same things that you are maybe not specifically but in an indirect kind of way and then I also have for those of you who are interested in the symposium I have and you yeah, don't have enough yeah. Yeah. I have yeah, enough um, thank you I'll brochures so. yeah, and John Chabon <clears throat> gets one mm -hmm. yeah, I'll pick so anyway so, so that was my little spiel nice. <laughs> that's yeah, wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Nice.